My name is Neil Patwari. I'm going to talk about how the square root raised cosine pulse gets used at the transmitter and receiver. And this is going to work like an example. I'm going to show how binary pulse amplitude modulation works. I'm going to use a square root raised cosine pulse shape with uh, alpha equals 0 0.5. This is defined, this function that I've graphed here in MATLAB is defined in the Rice book in appendix A.2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a few bits from the transmitter and show how the transmitted signal looks and then show how the received signal looks. So remember that the transmitter, we're going to send um, a signal S of T, and that signal is going to be a kind of a sum of amplitude modulated versions of this pulse shape. Um, and the pulse shape is going to be delayed by an integer number of symbol periods. The symbol period expresses how long it sends, how long it takes to send one bit, and how soon after that first uh, bit that we send, we're going to send the next one. And in this case, the pulse shape is this square root raised cosine pulse shape, um, but before we've used rectangular pulse shapes, and you've seen how that's worked. So what we do is we figure out what these amplitudes are. So for the bits 0 and 1, we're going to replace them with minus 1 and plus 1. This is for binary bipolar PAM. So A is going to be either um, minus 1 or 1. And we're going to assign the minus 1 value to the bit of 0. And the square root raised cosine shape, I'm not going to write out the formula for that but um, you can see it plotted here. This value here at time delay um, on the x-axis, so first I should say that the time delay on the x-axis divided by the symbol period. So this one really means t sub s in time. This two really means two t sub s in time. Note that the value of the square root raised cosine pulse shape is not equal to zero. It's equal to some negative value here. And at time two, it's equal to some positive value. Um, this should remind you that the pulse shape itself doesn't take zero values at integer multiples of t sub s. It's the autocorrelation function of the square root raised cosine pulse shape that takes zero values at integer multiples of t sub s. And to show you that, I'll bring up this square root raised cosine pulse shape, the same one plotted in red. But in addition, I plotted the autocorrelation function of the square root raised cosine pulse shape. The autocorrelation function is the square root raised cosine convolved with itself at different time delays. At time t sub s, that's when I get a value of exactly 0. And I get a value of exactly 0 at 2 times t sub s and 3 times t sub s. So that's the property of the square root raised cosine pulse shape. Its autocorrelation function takes a zero value every multiple of t sub s. And this is because it meets the Nyquist filtering criterion. That was how we proved that it would take these zero values every multiple of t sub s. This is just showing you that this is going to occur. But for now, I'm going to move on and talk about the transmitter, um, what the transmitted signal looks like when I have this sum of multiple amplitude modulated pulse shapes at different time delays. So first of all, let me talk about what happens when I have these pulses at different time delays. What do they look like? Here are the pulse shapes. Um, you can see that this center one is the same one that I drew up above. It's P of T. The next one is going to be P of T minus T sub S. And the one after that is P of T minus 2 T sub S, and so on. You can see that I have different copies here. They're all the same color, but um, you can kind of see how they overlap in time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply each one by a different amplitude. Right now I haven't multiplied by them by any amplitude. So I'm going to multiply the first one by a minus one because this first bit is zero. The next two will be one, so I'll leave them as positive one. The next two will be multiplied by a negative one and so on. And when I do that, I get the, the red plot here on the right, that uh, the bottom, this pulse, this red pulse shape, is this minus 1 times P of T 
let's see, this is one, two, three, four symbol periods before the zero one. So it's minus, or sorry, plus four T sub S. This next one is going to be P of T plus three T sub S and so on. Now that I've multiplied them by the amplitude uh, here, this amplitude A of minus four is minus one. But once I've multiplied all of the nine bits that I'm sending by their appropriate amplitude, I get these red lines instead of these red lines that are all positive. When I add all of those red lines together, the amplitudes of each one added together, I get this blue line. This is the sum of uh, a sub n p t minus n t sub s. Okay, this is s of t, just as I defined it up here. Okay, so that's what gets sent. This blue line that is kind of hard to read exactly which amplitude was sent at each time. I could guess, but um, it is not exactly intuitive uh, how, many, how many negative ones were sent here, for example, in this time period between minus one and one. So that's why our receiver does this job of correlating this blue line with the square root raised cosine pulse shape. So let me draw what's going on at the receiver. So I take this blue signal input into a filter with an impulse response of P of T, and then I sample at integer multiples of T sub S, and then those give me a number that I then decide if they're above zero or below zero to decide whether the bit was sent was a one or a zero. So let's talk about what happens when I filter the signal with an impulse response of P of T. That is, I take this blue line and I convolve it with the square root raised cosine pulse shape. What I get out of that filter over here is this black line. Okay, that black line is the blue line, which is what is input into my filter. And the output is higher, as, as we saw, because the, the energy in the signal is one and doesn't have this, uh, this low of a value. So the black line is higher in amplitude, and it also um, has this property that the pulse shapes then don't interfere with, the, with each other at integer multiples of n t sub s. So my sample at n t sub s, then I get these uh, red dots that are shown uh, on the plot, those red dots are the values at the sample times of n t sub s. Okay, minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, and so that's where I get these nine values now that are either minus one or one, and those go into my bit decision. So out of my bit decision then, I'm gonna get So I get the correct bits out because that uh, value that I receive after the sample is exactly the amplitude I multiplied that pulse shape by. It's almost like magic, except our magic here is the orthogonality of the pulse shape at integer multiples of n t sub s. You can imagine that this is going to help us in other modulations where we have more than two uh, particular symbol values, but this is how it works in binary PAM.